What is going on guys, DBG here, and since we are nearing the end of the year, I am going to make a top 10 best cards of 2020 list in NBA 2K20 slash 2K21, my team. So basically, these cards are going to be judged purely by how good they were at the time they were released. For example, if a card was released in August of 2020 as part of 2K20, they'll obviously be seen as lower than if the same card was released in like February. So it is all just how OP they were at the time of their release. So anyway, now let's get on to the 10. At number 10, we got a personal favorite of mine. And a lot of you will not have this guy anywhere near the top 10. I loved him. I don't think I even had him in my top 10 now 2K20. But looking back on it, two guard Chris Tapps Porzingis. This card was a joke. Obviously 51 half badges, half clamps. The guys released last year at Beasley base, which was quality release. Unfortunately, I gave Chris Tapps Brook Lopez base, which is actually pretty decent on next gen. But Beasley base is so, was such a nice release last year. He was so easy to green with. He literally was out here curry sliding. He could crab people. He could dribble. There was nothing he couldn't do. And he was 7-3 with elite defense badges. So his defense was incredible as well. His passing was ridiculous. This was just a mad. This card was mad. It was mad how good this card was. And it was mad that people just, just didn't really use this card. It was like two crossovers and you could have someone crabbed so, so easily. He was the easiest card, in my opinion, to just get a wide open shot with. Because all you have to do is call for a screen and curry. And this is before people curry slide spamming this year. Like, literally. And it's all you had to do with this card. He was a lockdown defender. He played lanes as well as anyone. Because he had, like, 95 speed at 7-3. And he was just ridiculous. Like, as you guys can see there. Curry into wide open three. Unfortunately, I missed it. But still. Just as easily as he missed that one. I was able to get in a little bit of space. Drive to the basket. Make an easy layup. And number nine, we are going with John Stockton Diamond. So when John Stockton Diamond came out, there was still like a week or so to go in September. He was out in the first two or three weeks. And this card here, you could get gold range on it because at the time he was released, range was super, super cheap. So everyone basically got range on him. So he had gold showtime, gold clamps. He had really, really good release. You could get range on him. His speed was good. He had like a 90, uh, five, or I think it was a 90 dunk. His release is still really, really great. I don't like him too much on current gen, but his release on, sorry, I don't like him too much on next gen. His release on current gen is still absolutely elite, in my opinion. I just think he's not quite as good on current, or sorry, on next gen. But he was a guy that at the time he was out, they still hadn't fully patched the fadeaways. The stick fades were still OP, so if you want to use them with the stick, you could. If you want to use them with button, it did not matter. John Stockton was just dominant. Most people use them as I'm using them here, as a shooter. He was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. Like he was the best shooting point guard in the game when he came out. He was the best defensive point guard in the game when he came out. He was the best dunking point guard in the game when he came out. And the fact that he's still a top five point guard in the game, like three months after he was released, like the card's over three months old, and he is still a top five point guard in this game. That is how good Stockton is. And if a card is still a top five card three months after they come out, you know that they've stood the test of time really well. So John Stockton, especially because you would get him for less than 100k today, he was out, deserves his spot on this list. And number eight, we have got from the end of February, the leap year packs, Galaxy Opal Tracy McGrady. So this is like one of the first Galaxy Opals in the game at this stage. I can't even remember. I think we might have had a Steph Curry out before him, but it was only two weeks after they gave us the Galaxy Opal Jordan and Vince Carter's our very first Galaxy Opals. But he has... Had flexible release at that stage, range extender, clamps Hall of Fame, obviously a quick draw Hall of Fame, which is what really separated him from his pink diamond. But Tracy McGrady, man, Trey Burke base. What more can you say? Like, it's still one of the best releases in the game. But Trey Burke base last year was off. Uh, I don't know. It's great boat years. Great boat years. But T-Mac, man, just different level. His card was just a different level. Whether you were shooting off the catch or off the move, basically everything went in. He was arguably the best defensive two guard in the game because he was six foot eight at the time. Well, not at the time he is six foot eight. He was six eight, one of the tallest two guards, one of the best shooting two guards, one of the best defense two guards, one of the best slashing two guards, and in general, just one of the best cards period in the game at that stage. Kawhi, or say not Kawhi, um, T Max release so good, so good. You gave him an inch of space, bang, quick stop into the three, and quick stop was way easier to do uh, last year than it is this year. But that was basically it. He was just way better Brandon Roy. 
Like Brandon Roy, I think, was slightly better in pink time. T Mac, this T Mac was a million times better than Brandon Roy. But still, as you guys can see here, the guy barely misses a shot when he's open. He had one of the easiest catch and shoot releases. As well as that, I'm not even using him to attack the basket. If you want to use him to attack the basket, he could do that equally as well. And this card came out in February. He came out in February, lads, and he was still usable at the very end of the game. That's how good this card was. Bit of a controversial one. And I'm going to say Pink Diamond Kawhi Leonard here. And there's a reason why I have Pink Diamond Kawhi Leonard over T-Mac. First of all, he came out two weeks earlier. He came out... I'm pretty sure he came out right after they released the first Galaxy Opals. He had half clamps, half range extender, half quick draw, which was to be expected for a card at that time. It was a high rated. But the thing is that this guy was usable up until the very end. I remember I used him in a tournament at the very end of the year, and he still killed it. Because even though I didn't, we a lot of us didn't know at the time, he could tween in 2K20. He had the pro A tween. He was an elite defender, had some of the best defensive animations in the game. His release was unbelievable, Ray Allen base. I, this card was scarily, scarily good. It was just that at the time when he was released, no one really knew. Like more people used this Kawhi Leonard at the very end of the year when we had all of our God tier cards and then used him when he came out. I get a lot of that was to do a price, but man, this Kawhi Leonard had everything. He had the release, he had the defense, he had the tween, he had the dunking. He was easily the best card in the game. Easily the best card in the game at the time. And he was a guy that honestly you could still use up to the last day of 2k20 and he'd be still great for you at number six we have got pink diamond blake griffin and when you add badges to this guy there's just no comparison there's just no comparison in terms of big guys at this stage last year like this is a card that's better than any point like in terms of what he does which is like be a kind of primary ball handling center you can use the ball dunking there were no cards as good as this Blake Griffin in 2K20 until like May. And this card here, people were getting this card and I'm pretty sure the 10th of November is when Hoove got him and he was he got him like an hour after Bud got him. But this guy right here, he has one of the best releases in the game for a big man. Not only that, he's got insane dribble sigs as well. Pro one behind the back. He's a jumper is elite on both current and next gen. He's got insane stats all around. His three balls really good. His dunks really good. His defense really good. Yeah, he has to put clamps and range extender on him, but does it even matter? Does it really even matter? Like, you're getting a center. You are literally getting a center that I can guarantee you will be usable until like April, May. Whatever about Steph Curry, I don't necessarily regret not going for him or, or Steph, but they are still the two best cards in my team. And in my opinion, it's not that close. He is a ridiculous player, a ridiculous big man. His dunking's exceptional, his shooting's exceptional, his defense for what he does is exceptional. He plays lanes well, he runs the floor well. This is a card that at the time was unstoppable. The only reason why this card isn't higher is that I think maybe a week or so later, they started putting out a bunch of clamp centers. Bill Russell could kind of handle them a little bit. Like there were counters to him. There weren't many clamp centers in 2K20 at this stage. There's a lot more now this year, but either way, if you want to put them higher, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to argue if you want to put them a lot higher than this. At number five, we've got week one, Alan Houston. We have got pre-stick patch Alan Houston. I'm just pre-fade patch. Like you don't even need to say anything else. His stats were okay. He had like range extender, flexible and stuff. Like they were all right. He had a decent three ball, but the way the game was played week one, Basically, after the first day, they patched the game because nobody could shoot the ball. And all that ended up happening was, if you knew how to use the stick, you were unguardable. Like, yeah, this guy had kind of given up, but I just want to show how easy it was to hit shots with the stick. But you were literally, literally unguardable if you had Alan Houston and knew how to use the stick. Every contest was like a 2-3%. If you knew how to aim, you get made every shot. You didn't miss. It didn't matter. You could have four defenders running around. That's how I used to, that's how I went and won like 80 games in a row in season one. Just shooting fadeaways. Like teams used to literally have four people chasing Alan Houston around. And it didn't matter. I was taking a shot every single time. and was going in every time. Alan Houston deserves his spot on this list. Number four, we have got point guard Giannis, who came out at the very, very start of March. So at the stage when this card came out, he had range as well. He had range, he could handle, he could dribble glitch. Again, another guy that was still in my team until the last day of the game. He came out at the start of March. 
I literally, four months, five months later, I was playing the game in August, five months later, he was still in the squad of a lot of high level players. He was a point guard, which is a big, big thing for uh, Giannis. And at that stage, the only real tall point guards in the game that people were using, Magic Johnson was all right, the Frostbite one, but he wasn't great. But Ben Simmons couldn't shoot, he wasn't great either. And then they just came out with this Giannis card. They came out with the best card in the game, who happened to be 6'11 and playing a point guard. Like, it was absolutely ridiculous. He was so good that if you didn't have, like, the best players in the game, so many people used Michael Ray Richardson for the sole reason that he had really high interior defense and he was 6'5". The guy couldn't play offense. Like, Michael Ray Richardson could not play offense, but people were forced to use him as a counter for Giannis or have Michael Ray Richardson somewhere in their squad. You know it's bad when people that don't specifically have this card a lot of the time have to put in have to buy a card as a counter like that is absolutely awful like that's the reason i use my hurts and purely as a yannis counter because i knew he's the only cheap card in the game that could somewhat guard him but this yannis his release was so good as well he could shoot from deep later on in the year you could use him you could use my power forward and he was the best power forward in the game like you gave him a bit of space bang wide open green his dunking was unbelievable. I didn't even know about dribble glitching at this stage, but as the year went on, people learned how to dribble glitch with that Pro 2 behind the back. He just became even better. I'm telling you. I am telling you. This Giannis Antetokounmpo, he was it. He was it. And he was as good as the Opal. He was as good as the Opal because the Opal couldn't play point guard. And number three, we've got Goat Yao. I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, how is Goat Yao not number one? Goat Yao was ridiculous. My only reason is that Goat Yao came out at the very, very end of July. And the game had about two weeks of life, li of life left. Whereas the other two guys um, had a lot more of the game where they were in it. But Yao Ming, 64 half badges, 7 foot 6. The guy is the best card in the history of 2K. Again, it's just that there is a guy that is very... There is one guy that I just think this year is just next level... And there's another guy who is very, very comparable and was out six weeks longer than him, which is why I am putting you out at number three. But don't get me wrong. This seven foot six speed boosting demigod who could shoot the ball from half court and curry slide is the best card we have ever seen in my team. And you better believe it. I'm telling you, we are getting another Yao Ming later this year. We are getting a Goat Yao or a Yao Ming that's similar to this later on in the year. And as long as it comes in like July and August, I'll be fine because there'll be just fun cards to use. But this Yao Ming was unstoppable. He could hit from deep. Literally. He used to force people to rage quit straight away because no one wanted to deal with him. So he could shoot from half court. He was a dominant inside presence back when post hooks were a thing. He could curry slide. He could curry slide. His jumper was unbelievable, and he just dominated dunking and running. He was ridiculous. Best card in the game by a country. Actually, best card in the game, just in general. And number two, we are going back to this year. And it's Pink Diamond Steph Curry. I know you might be saying, oh, this card is nothing compared to the other guys. This card came out in September. And this card came out in September. People got this card in September. He is still the best card in my team. He will probably be in the top two to three cards in my team. Until about February. Until about February because of the way he plays in his animations. He came out in September. It is three months after people got this card. And I don't think there's much of a debate that this is the best card in the game. Like Steph Curry had so he has solid defense. Oh, his jumper is what separates him. Half range extender. The Curry slide, which is obviously one of the most overpowered dribbling things in the game, especially in current gen. The fact that you can speed glitch into quick stops. You can Curry slide, crossover, speed glitch. He is just almost unstoppable. The reason why, if you're playing in a competitive game, almost every single player has this card. Because he is just that good. And, again, you have to take into account the time he was released. He was released in September. He was the best card in September, October, November, and December. But just, he's unstoppable. If you know what you're doing, he's unstoppable. And I'm saying this right now. I don't have any clips. He is even better on next gen. He's got the curry fadeaway. Which was unbelievable before they patched fades. But I'm telling you, on next gen, literally just curry fade. Just fade away with him. It doesn't matter. Hoping it has it, it doesn't matter. He's going to look like day one Alan Houston. His fade away is that good on next gen. And number one, we have got Galaxy Opal Kareem. He was a comparable card to Yao, but I will say Yao's better. I will say that much. I do believe that Yao is better than Kareem. 
However, the big thing is that Kareem had six weeks extra in the game than Yao Ming, which is why I'm going to give the advantage to Kareem. Kareem was the best card we had ever seen at the time. And some people still prefer him to Yao. His handle was better than Yao's. He had um, Pro 2 behind the back so he could dribble glitch. Although people found out how to dribble glitch with Yao and at that stage it was GG. His release was probably better than Yao's. Like that Pro 2 behind the back into a hop step. He was basically like, imagine a 7-2 Yanis with 99 everything. About a month before Goat Yanis came out. His fadeaways just were crazy. The guy was, he used to be able to hit skyhooks from the free throw line. Like there was just something about this Kareem. He was the best at everything. He was the best defensive player in the game period. Like there were literally times when I would put him on the other team's point guard. I remember I used to run him at center and I used to run pink diamond Giannis at point guard. And one of the weird things I used to do was I, oh sorry, it was uh, Chris Stapps. I used to put Kareem on the point guard and Chris Stapps on the center. And put Giannis on the two. He was that good at guarding ball. His jumper was ridiculous. He was unguardable going to the basket. When he came out, there were no counters. Like there were actually no counters for him. For about two, three weeks till Wiseman came out, after this card came out, there were literally no cards that were even in the ballpark of this card. So for that reason, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, for having a little bit more longevity, is in here at number one on this list. So anyway, that's the video. Let me know if I forgot anyone, if I forgot one of your favorites, because I've definitely forgot some players. Either way, though, you can't really argue that these guys were not all incredible in their respective games and at their respective times in their respective games. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much it. That's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.